Hello everyone, and welcome to the 105th episode of Analyzing Evil, featuring Yu Jin from Old Boy. A film that's a roller coaster ride of shock and intrigue from start to finish, Old Boy presents us with one of the most complex revenge stories ever created, at the center of which we find the devious machinations of Yi Jin, a relentless man whose experience of utter heartbreak sends him down the cruel path of vengeance that totally consumes his person. In this video, we'll be examining all the details we're given about Yi Jin in the film, jumping around quite a bit to piece together the origins of his character's development and his personality. And because the Spike Lee film is both vastly different from this film, and, to put it kindly, a dumpster fire, we won't be discussing Yi Jin's counterpart in that film here. Now there is a manga of the same name that this film was loosely adapted from, and while it does have its own merits in a few ways, there are two reasons that I won't be discussing the manga here. The first is that the characters in the story are different enough so that they can't be considered one-to-one -one representations of one another. And the second is because in my opinion, this is one of the rare cases where the source material is inferior to its adaptation. I encourage you to read it for yourself to find out why, or if you don't want to take the time to read the manga to save yourself some disappointment, I suggest you watch this video by Cinefix to learn the differences. As I said earlier, the manga has its good parts, but by its very anticlimactic ending, I found myself wishing I had never knew it existed. I won't spoil that ending for you here, but suffice to say, it was a very lacking experience, and I apologize if any of you are diehard fans of it, but if you haven't read that story or seen this film, the vast majority of you would be better off just watching the film to get the most out of Old Boy. Also, I've tried my best to pronounce the names of the characters as I heard them pronounced in the film, but if I falter in that regard, feel free to yell at me down below. Now without further ado, let's begin. In order to detail the evil of Yi Jin, we first need to examine the event that pushed him towards darkness to begin with, the suicide of his sister. Now for anyone who hasn't seen the film, we learn towards the end of the story that Yi Jin and his sister Yi Su Ah were lovers, a claim which is backed up by Yu Jin's statement to Desu that he and his sister loved each other despite the circumstances. Now because of this relationship, Yu Jin's feelings for his sister reached far beyond what they normally would have if they had a typical sibling relationship perhaps even enhancing that relationship by amplifying his pre-existing love for her to a profound level of infatuation and passion that few of us have ever experienced. Unfortunately for the Yi siblings, Desu bore witness to their love affair, and though it's never said in the film that their peers became aware that it was Sua's brother that she had these relations with, the issue here was Desu's willingness to report what he saw to his friend Juan, an instance of loose lips that would ignite a swath of rumors that cemented Sua's status as a promiscuous girl a label that humiliated Sua to the point of extreme stress that resulted in her experiencing a hysterical pregnancy, which is the development of pregnancy-like symptoms through stress or other situations that causes the sufferer to believe they're pregnant without truly being pregnant. Now, a pregnancy might not have been the biggest deal in the world if it weren't for the fact that Sua's only experience that we know of, of penetrative intercourse, was with her brother Ujin. So when she began to experience these symptoms, she feared that she was carrying her brother's child, which could have caused her to enter a state of despondency for a variety of reasons, like fear of her family's reaction, the implications of the revelation of her and her brother's relationship, or the health of her child due to the circumstances of its conception, to name a few. So, Suwa resolved to kill herself, and she did so right in front of Ujin as he clung onto her arm for dear life, eventually losing his grip and feeling the last caress of her fingers before watching the love of his life die right before his eyes. This relationship, and its ending, is the perfect storm of emotional ruin that could traumatize any person so severely that it could entirely alter the course of their life. And if you put yourself in Ujin's shoes, it's easy to see why. Not only has he lost a sister here, but a lover, and not just a lover, his first love, and he didn't just lose her, he watched her die right in front of him. Some of us are lucky enough to obtain a relationship with our first loves and remain with them from the beginning of its inception until the end of our lives. However, the vast majority of us can unfortunately remember the heartbreak that's associated with losing that love or not even obtaining it in one way or another. And that heartbreak is often experienced when we're young, vulnerable, and still developing our emotional intelligence and identities. And whether it ends on a good note or bad, that heartbreak has in some way affected all who have experienced it. And Ujin is no exception. Or rather, he is a prime example of just how much of an impression that loss can leave on a person's entire being, especially when you consider how deep their relationship ran. And a testament to that fact is how decades after his sister's death, that moment traumatized him so much that even the mention of the circumstances that caused her death was enough to send him into a murderous rage and kill Juan for calling her a slut. 
Whoever Ujin was, or was going to become, was completely erased by this event, and his life was now forever turned towards exacting his revenge against the man who had hurt him more than he could have ever imagined. And this is the why of the evil of Yi Ujin. Why this man resolved himself to dedicate his life to the utter destruction of another's. But what kind of man has this created? Owing to his inheritance of a vast family fortune, Yu Jin is incredibly well off, and his personality seems to have been molded around the privileges that he's been given. Handsome and well-dressed, Yu Jin is cocky, confident, condescending, facetious, and flippant, and his mannerisms express these traits, showing us a man who's deliberate, measured, careless, and even elegant, one who uses his servants and cronies as playthings to be exploited and used for his nefarious aims with no regard for their lives or well-being. And he gives us a taste of this lofty attitude when we see him drop his hat on the floor for Mr. Han to collect after walking through his front door, a man who appears to be operating like a king walking through a world he has complete control over. But these traits cannot be said to be solely derived from his wealth, as Yu Jin has a monstrous intelligence and has the distinction of being a master manipulator, two traits that provide him the self-assuredness to operate in the way that he does, and his far-reaching plan to take revenge on Desu is a testament to that fact. Imprisonment, hypnosis, expert surveillance, falsified bodily modifications, subterfuge, influence, and murder are all used over the course of 15 years to devastate a single person, and none of that could have been accomplished with money alone. But his intelligence is not the only thing in play here, and the other trait of his that is amplified by this plan is his sadism, as Yu Jin is more often than not seen to be thoroughly enjoying the torture he's forced Desu to endure via his imprisonment and the game he's making him play once he's released. And not only does he enjoy this, but his revenge actually seems to be the singular source of joy in Yu Jin's life, considering he says as much once he's finally exacted his pound of flesh from Desu at the climax of the film ending his life shortly after, now that it's devoid of its purpose. However, it's interesting to note that though Yujin obviously hates Desu, he seems to love him as well, often speaking to him or of him affectionately or saying that he misses him, which could be taunts, but I believe it's possible that Yujin views Desu as the closest person to him now that his sister is gone, a man who has in a certain way experienced the love he experienced when he spied Yujin and Sua having relations, and a man who has been the only constant in his life for the past 15 years, one that gives him sleepless nights now that he's no longer a stable presence after he's been released. A bastard you hate, but wouldn't want to kill. A bitch you detest, but want more than to kill. Words out of Yujin's mouth that describe his feelings toward Desu quite well. Now all that Yujin does in this film is of course a direct mirror of the pain that he felt when he lost his sister, but it's also his desire to have Desu feel what he felt, to experience that overwhelming love and the loss associated with it. While his imprisonment of Desu was meant to torture him, it was more so a minor detail in his eventual envelopment in the same emotions that Yujin is tortured by. By murdering Desu's wife, keeping him locked up until his daughter comes of age, and hypnotizing the both of them so they fall in love with one another, Yujin ensures that Desu will experience the same feelings and heartbreak as he had, albeit in a different way. Whereas Yujin's incestuous love was broken by suicide, Desu's is broken by its revelation, destroying his psyche as he learns that the woman he'd come to love over the course of a few weeks was in fact his own daughter, which while horrifying him rather than exciting him, achieved the desired result in ingraining Desu in the same darkness as Yujin. Laugh and the world laughs with you. Weep and you weep alone. This oft-repeated phrase in this film accurately sums up the feelings of Yi Jin the man whose love was taken from him by the laughter that was shared by his peers at his sister's expense, and the tears that he and his sister alone endured when that laughter drove her to her death. Pain that Eugen has meticulously ensured would be felt by the very man who he blames for inflicting it on himself. Be it a grain of sand or a rock in water, they all sink the same. Another phrase uttered by Eugen that further sums up his feelings in this situation. That being his view that the few words uttered by Desu that sealed his sister's fate carries the same weight as if he had pushed her over the bridge himself. And in their final confrontation, we learn that Eugen's ultimate goal throughout this entire scenario was to receive atonement from the proverbial foot that kicked that grain of sand into the eye of Eugen and Sua, the tongue of Desu the instrument that sang the song of his misery, an act of symbolic self-mutilation that satisfied Yu Jin's lust for revenge far more than any other punishment he could have exacted on Desu himself, or that Desu could have with his own hand. In the end, with his vengeance achieved, Yu Jin is left with only his pain and no purpose, ending his life in a tearful display of agony as his last thought 
remains where his mind had been for the majority of his adult life, with his sister at his last moment together with her. But though Yi Yujin perishes here, he leaves behind a man broken beyond what he himself had experienced, one who's been prematurely aged by years of torture, both mental and physical. A man without a tongue, left to pick up the pieces of a life destroyed by an insatiable desire for vengeance. A legacy of darkness left by one man that's embodied within another until he draws his last breath. And at this end, who was Yi Yu Jin? He was a man who experienced the overwhelming feeling of youthful love and passion compounded by years of familial relations. Once that love had been violently torn from him, he turned towards dedicating his life to remedying that heartbreak in the cruelest way possible through the total destruction of the man that he deemed responsible for his sister's suicide, no matter the cost to himself or others, and he succeeded. But in doing so, he also eradicated his own life, leaving a walking doll made of Yi Jin's body that contained nothing of substance aside from fury and hatred, a life destroyed through the merciless pursuit of vengeance at any cost, a cost that Yu Jin seems to have been aware of when he spoke the following lines to Desu during one of their encounters. Seeking revenge is the best cure for ones who are hurt. Vengeance is healthy. But what happens after you've fulfilled your vengeance? I bet that hidden pain will probably come back again. And come back it does, as we see when in his last moments, all that Eugen is left with is his pain. A grim reminder that the achievement of one's revenge rarely ever brings the solace one craves, rather leaving you emptier than you already were as you shroud yourself in an all-consuming evil. Thank you all for tuning in to this episode of Analyzing Evil, and I hope you've enjoyed. What are your thoughts on Yu Jin? Did I miss anything? Let me know down below, and leave a suggestion for a villain you'd like to see featured while you're at it. If you like this video, hit that thumbs up button, and make sure to subscribe if you haven't already. A big thank you to all of my subscribers, to my patrons, and to anyone who's decided to honor me with a super thank, and a most vile thank you to those whose names you're seeing on screen now. Join the channel's Discord server and Reddit to interact with myself and the community, and follow me on the social media platforms listed below to keep up with the channel. As always, thanks for watching, and I'll be seeing you soon.